Space Quest 3, The Pirates of Pestulon, PC 1989 adventure developed and published by Sierra Online. Um, so Space Quest 1 was 1986. Um, 1987 was Space Quest 2, so this one was 89, two years after the second one was released. And we've already got much nicer box art in this compared to the uh, the earlier ones. All right, Space Quest 3. We got this sick-ass painting here. There's our boy Roger eating a burger with totally not Coke there. Uh, the Pirates of Pestulon. Such adventure, such danger, such wonderfully silly fun, says Computer Entertainer. Such wow. Monolith Burgers. Sure. All right. 512K, 8 megahertz or faster recommended. Uh, I don't think I need to downclock the CPU in mine. I think this one runs fine at whatever whatever uh, megahertz my thing is. I think it's 200 is the one that I got in here. So whatever. We're well over 8 megahertz. Uh, MS-DOS compatible, Hercules Monochrome, MCGA, VGA. Uh, hard disk recommended, mouse joystick optional. I'll be using a regular ass keyboard. Supports optional, Roland MT32. So, the first two games we had the beeps and boops from the PC speaker. Not anymore. We got a Roland, actual Roland MT32. This is, this would have been very expensive back in the day for like music producers and just the very wealthy back in 1989. Um, but luckily, they are quite a bit cheaper nowadays. And you can even emulate a Roland MT32 in software. Um, you can emulate it on original hardware. You can emulate it with a modern computer. And I believe with the Mr. Project, there's like a module you could use um, that uh, uses Raspberry Pi to, uh, to do that. Um, your Sound Blaster's MT32 emulation, it is absolutely not the same as as real MT32 or even even Munt MT32. Because yeah, Sound Blaster has Roland, but oh man, it sounds so bad. <laughs> That's seven hundred dollars for for a Roland. I paid three hundred for mine, and there's also. If you want to do it actually properly with an MT32, you not only need an MT32, you need a special card to interface with it through MIDI as well. Um, but there's also a way to get around that too, because you can you can use this weird driver thing on original hardware to drive MT32 signals through this weird software thing, and it does work. Uh, but what I did was somebody made a hardware clone of the weird expensive MT32 card um, and I used that. I put that in my, my vintage machine that's going to be running the game. So as far as the game thinks and is aware and what the computer is aware of, I am using actual legit Roland hardware end-to-end -end for, for playing this. Not that it matters though. And honestly, if anyone's thinking like, oh man, I should drop $700 on getting a Roland MT32 set up like that. Don't, don't, um, honestly, the emulated MT32 through Munt or through Raspberry Pi or anything else, it sounds identical to actual hardware. And in some cases, in some cases, the emulated stuff sounds a little bit better than the actual hardware. I know you, you get the audio file thing of like, oh, the warmth of the original hardware Nah, just save save your money. That's that's fourteen hundred tacos from Jack in the Box. Get those instead. Just just emulate the MT thirty two. This this is coming from a guy who spent spent serious money on all this Roland gear. I also have some of the other Roland stuff. Just fucking emulate it. <laughs> don't don't spend a bunch of money on MT thirty two. It's not worth it. It sounds the same and better emulated okay all right that's my spiel about that all right have you seen these two guys two guys from andrama yeah i'd love a, a taco emulator that would be great that would be great 
software authors pirated, the two guys from Andromeda, designers of the graphically extravagant and satirically sensational Space Quest series, have disappeared into thin oxygen. Hysterical game fanatics around the world wait word on the whereabouts of these celestial celebrities. Hey, Alyssa. Good to see you. Who could be the mastermind behind this evil plot? Could it be the pirates of Pestalon, known for their plundering, praying, and unprincipled practices? Uh, Jack in the Box did fix their tacos. I think there was just, like, whoever was cooking them every time that I've gone there for the past year or so was just doing a really shitty job. Um, I think whoever they got on taco duty nowadays knows what they're doing. Either that or enough people told Jack in the Box that their tacos are trash that they changed their recipe back to what it used to be, which I think that might also be the case. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, or maybe the legions of Space Quest fans who would kill to be the first to play Space Quest 3, the graphic adventure game with the closest thing yet to motion picture quality animation. Really, this is, this is quite the claim. The graphic adventure game with the closest thing yet to motion picture quality animation. So this would have been 1989, right, for this one? Wasn't Dragon's Lair out at this time? Uh... Though I guess this there is the the thing here for graphic graphic adventure game. Maybe that's that's how they can use that particular claim. I don't know. Uh, not to be forgotten are the monkey suited minions of Sludge Vohal from our last episode, who would love to make banana pudding out of these responsible for bringing them behind bars. <laughs> hey Zach. Uh who are the dirty deed doers behind our daring duo's demise? Is it too late to save the two guys from a disgusting and downright despicable doom? Holy Space West Space Adventurers, find out for yourself as Roger Wilco, Intergalactic Garbageman, returns to the rescue. Alright, features. Superior graphics and animation combined to create a true interactive cartoon where you become the central character. It includes an original music score over 30 minutes long, created by rock and roll legend Super Tramps, Bob Sieb Siebenberg, Slabenberg. I, huh... Original score by Super Trans Bob. I could have sworn this was the same same person who did the music for the whole series, and that name does not ring a bell. So I I don't know about that claim either. <laughs> uh, all right, completion of Space Quest One and or Two is not necessary. Although Mark and Scott would appreciate the business, I don't know. Based off of all the stuff that I remember happening in this game, kind of important that you uh, you play one and two. But then again, there aren't any puzzle things that I, I'm aware of that require that. All right, authors Mark Crow and Scott Murphy. Uh, which is also these two. Those are the, the two guys. Blast off and feed your face at the monolith. There are many places to explore. Some will be hospitable. Others will hospitalize you. Arnold the Annihilator is knocking on your airlock, and he's not here to sell life insurance, although you could use some about now. Become part of an intergalactic scavenger hunt, and you're it. Okay. What's this? this fancy mustard. All right. Much nicer box on this one compared to the, the other two. Okay. And then this would have been distributed on floppy disk here. This is a three, three and a half inch floppy disk. Uh, three disk version 1.0p interpreter uh, 0 0.453. And of course the serial number. This, um, this game did not have copy protection as far as I can remember. Um, all right. Space Coast 3, the manual. So... Designed by two guys from Andromeda. Programmed by Mark Crow, Scott Murphy, Devil Gulfio, Ken Coke, Chris Smith. Uh, yeah, music by Bob Siebenberg. Interesting. Music system, sound effects. Maybe it's the sound effects I'm remembering. All right. Cuddle with the crimbers, critters at the Nimbus 3 petting zoo. All right. So the manuals also get... <laughs> the manuals also start getting a lot better. Uh, in this one. This is a beautiful hair island. Already already off to a great start here. 
All right, limited warranty. Sorry, without the registration card, you're not covered by the warranty. So you got to fill out the registration card. Uh, all right, Space Quest 3. At the end of Roger's adventure in Space Quest 2, he had nearly escaped death board Sledge Vohal's Asteroid Fortress. Entering an escape pod, he rocketed away seconds before it burned up in the Labionian atmosphere. Shortly after blasting away, he discovered his oxygen supply near depletion, making last dish effort to survive. He climbed into the hibernetic sleep chamber with the hope that somebody would soon find him. Now an indeterminate time has passed, and the small pod drifts aimlessly through deep space. Time stands still for our hero in suspended animation. All right. Meanwhile, on a small planet in the Andromeda system, we look in on a typical alien family's living chamber and watch as Mom, Pop, and the kids gather around the Holovision with their HV dinners, just in time for I Love Lucite rerun. Uh, neighborhood Watch is what that sign says down there. We got a Monolith Burger sign. This year for our vacation, I think we shall all go to Flea Butt. Huh? But Dad, I want to go to Roberta Land. Shut up. You'll go to Flea Butt and like it. I'd love to go to Roberta Land. Uh, Cosmo Travel Guide. Come to beautiful Orat Bay. Uh, sick of humans? Come here. Sure. Uh, we interrupt this hologram to bring you Hyper News Bolton. We have just been informed that universally famous software authors, those two guys from Andromeda, were abducted today by software pirates. The reason for the abduction is not known, as there's been no death threats or ransom requests. It's rumored, however, that the pirates were under contract with the dis disreputable software publisher Scumsoft. Makers of such flops as Stunt Flogger, Akatron, and Scum World. Company president Elmo Pug cannot be reached for comment, as the location of Scumsoft is shrouded in secrecy. We now return you to our regularly scheduled hologram. Alright, so there we go. Floppy drives, install the game, load the game. Hard drives, music device, Amiga. We don't have that. Um, here's how I'll be controlling the game. You just use a numpad, five stops. Uh, game speed control works exactly the same as the other games. Uh, let's see. RGB composite graphics is the thing, apparently. Sure. Uh, interacting with the game. So just like the, the first two games, there you type in commands. It's not a primarily mouse-driven game. Not yet. That's in 4. Um, so we do still need to type in, to, in stuff to make things happen in the game. Saving and loading. Tips for beginner adventure. That's not us. Um, draw map. Be careful. Walk through. Alright. Beginning adventures only. We are not beginners. So, pretty sure that is it for the rest of the manual. Yep. But of course... If you still need help, Ken Williams has got you covered. All right. Let's uh, hop into it here. All right. So we will not be needing OC Remix for this one because we got some actual music in this banger. Uh, I do, however... Need to turn on everybody's favorite extra camera. The Roland Cam. So this is the display on the Roland MT32, which I actually have one. Um, there's uh, to the right of this display is um, a knob for uh, volume and six buttons for selecting uh, just MIDI stuff. But don't worry about that. You don't need any of that to, uh, to use it for games. You just plug it in and it just kind of works. Uh, but the thing with using an actual Roland MT32 is anytime you want to use it for a game, it has to literally program uh, some of the logic on the MT32 ahead of time. This is why if you're, um, if you're playing a general MIDI game, uh, it, it loads immediately because it's just using these stock sound effects like, hey, play a piano at this this pitch or play a trumpet at this pitch. For an MT32, the game has to literally program what a trumpet sounds like. It has to program what a piano sounds like and put that into the memory bank of the MT32 before the game launches, which is why it takes... Uh, 
this long and we get the insert Buckazoid here before the game starts. Uh. Okay. Dr. Solo. And then there's there's five channels and a rhythm channel. Yeah, it's quite a bit better than the the beeps and boops of the PC speaker, right? Indeterminate amount of time, time stands still for our hero. Small escape pod just aimlessly through unfamiliar star fields. Inside, Roger lies undisturbed, but not for long. And also the graphics look quite a bit better than the other one. And turn up the MT for you guys there. There we go. Todd has taken aboard a robot commanded garbage freighter. Yep. Graphics, much better. Much higher resolution. Many more colors. I don't think this is the best looking version of this game, though. Oh, also, there's a sound effect missing here in this. While Pod is jarred by a sudden shock, which triggers the sleep chamber's revive mode. As the glass shroud slides back, Roger slowly begins to regain consciousness. So I don't know why I can't get this part to work properly on either emulated or on real hardware here, but right here. Where am I? So this this should actually say where am I in speech through the, the sound card, but I, I could never get it to work. <laughs> Notice that the sounds of the pods grow softer till they are imperceptible, having served its purpose and taxed its resources. The pod is a final hum and shuts down. All right, and then we're in the game proper. So we have a mouse cursor now, and we can use the uh, the bars up here. Vapor calculator. This is sure. I don't know why you'd need a, a, an abacus, but they give you one. Um, and then there's also a boss key in this. Now, if you hit that, oh, I get it. You don't want your boss to know you've been playing Space Quest Three. In fact, you don't know want your boss to know that you've been playing Space Coast 3 for 0 hours, 3 minutes, 55 seconds. Good idea, I'm afraid that. Being good company men we are, we can't help you cheat like that, sorry. So, boss keys were actually a thing in a lot of, um, like, DOS games. Uh, where you'd hit a, hit a key combination and it would bring up the command prompt, a fake command prompt or something. For like, yeah boss, I'm just, just getting settled in for work for the day. And it would show a fake, a fake screen of something. And then if you hit escape or any other key, you would just go back to the game instead. <laughs> but 
But for this game, they put in a fake boss key because Space Quest. Uh, yeah, Rogue had one. Oh, that's right. Okay. I still have my old saves here from when I when I speed ran this. Um, so we'll use the new directory that I made. Let's key three. Okay. Start. Much easier to save the game in this. All right. So one of the benefits of mouse control for this is that you don't have to do stuff like look around anymore. You can still do this. And debris, cluttered junk bay, escape pod in the middle of the room, chunks of metal seeing lying around, small sections of old space rare. So you could do that, or you could right click on. Oh, you can't. Oh, shit. Never mind. All right. Never mind. You can't do that in this one. I forget which game lets you do that, but it's. Uh... Oh, it was Quest for Glory. That's right. It was Quest for Glory that let you do that. So this was still one of the early... Um, this and King's Quest 4 were the early games that used this engine. And then in Quest for Glory 1 and 2, they let you right-click on things to look at them, like specifically look at those things. But in this, you, you still have to like look at... Uh, cylinder? Whatever this thing is right here. What is this? Pardon me, we're too stupid. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so we still have the glowing gem from the first game, but I could have sworn we had a bunch of other stuff with us in Space Quest 2, but apparently we still have this gem. Sure. Uh, still carrying the piece of Orium you picked up in Labion during your last adventure. Long since lost its glow. Huh. Wonder how long we were asleep for then. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we got various types of abandoned spacecraft lower the floor of the intergalactic junkyard. All this place needs is a junkyard dog. You should read the thought. If only. All right. So we have just actual Star Wars Tie Fighter here. Acme Rocket. This is probably Star Trek maybe, or just a regular-ass UFO. Uh, actually, no. Wasn't this Lost in Space? That thing? Overwhelmed by the variety of space trash, large bucket conveyor carries shredded ships to a horizontal conveyor high above. Okay. So we got giant robot arm. We have half of a gear here. Uh, they were okay. All right, so for this, you gotta stand, stand in this, and it'll bring you up. Okay. Oh no! So we we could do an input here, but shredded like an Iran Contra document. Your many independent parts flutter to the. Okay, USDA. It slices and dices. Your less than choice cut will go. There we go. Turn up the speed a little bit here and get back up on there. I don't like that the the death prompts auto auto advance because that was a lot of text to read in a very short, small amount of time. Uh, okay. So what we want to do here is stand and then jump. upper area okay so if I press down you stepped off the rail you're dead again way to go haven't we touched anything 
Wouldn't be so bad except for the sudden stop at the end. Next time, don't get so close to the edge. All right. So many more ways to die in this one compared to the, the earlier games. And you definitely don't want to use the mouse to, uh, to move around in this one. So I don't think we can go through that bend over there. So I guess we're just going to the left. And then another another downside with the MT32 here is um, this really predates uh, Sound Blaster support for a lot of things. So the MT32 had to do not only the music, but also the sound effects. So any screen that had sound effects in it, for the most part, won't have music as well. Um, though later on, when... Uh, sound Blaster became a thing, you could have both. You could have sound effects through the Sound Blaster and music through the MT32. Uh, which we'll see in later games. Um, okay. Look around. What we got? In this room, the rail makes a U-turn. There's a machine here which hangs under the rail. There's a chute at the bottom. In the middle are panels of monitoring devices being tended by a droid. Okay. Look, droid. Not a model you've seen before. Droid appears to be dedicated to his workstation. Seems harmless enough. Okay. Uh. Climb down. Not from here. Okay. Plopping the seat, you grasp the forward backward control of the grabber. Okay. Look, grabber. You see, you see a handle. Grip by you controls motion and a button marked claw. Okay. Claw. Press button. Finding nothing since the grabber. Okay. All right. So that's that screen. Um. So we know what's below the screen. This was the the right part of the Jupiter Two and the giant robot arm. We haven't seen below this screen. Claw can't work here because there's pipes below. Okay. So we can't see what's below the screen. And then here... What is here? Okay. So that's the that's the pod from 2001, I think. And then the center of the screen, we got a ship. Um, I forget what those things are called in the center. Those That's... Connects... I think I remember playing with those as a kid. I forgot what those are called, though. Uh, okay. And this is probably the upper part. Not connects. They 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 definitely weren't Legos. It, this was a separate thing. Okay, so there's. There's a Megazord on that top one. So even though this is technically one screen, it's going through separate screens at the top. So it wasn't it's it's not Legos. It's not Lincoln Logs. I also had Lincoln Logs, those were a thing. Oh shit, this is gonna bother me now what those things are called. Oh, Tinker Toys, yeah. Thank you, Andrew, in, in YouTube chat. Yes, Tinker Toys. That's what those were. It's like like Legos, but way less versatile. Okay. So it doesn't look like there's much on this screen except for this tunnel thing.
man, I bet you could go on Goodwill and get like 50 pound bag of Tinker Toys for five bucks. I would totally get that if I didn't already have like a mountain of crap in this apartment already. All right, and then this should be just above where we started. And it looks like Klaus sends his contract with the warp motivator. Sure. Grabs it firmly, is sent back to the grabber. Okay. All right. And then going off of my prior knowledge of this game, which is extensive, I I have played Space Quest 3 the most out of all the Space Quest games. We got to bring this back over to that ship that was buried. We will speed up. We have to drop it like right here. Sensing an adequate surface, the claw releases its cargo, begins the ascent to the grabber unit. Object thuds into place within the cavity of the ship. Okay. This will save us a lot of trips later in the game by just doing that now. Okay. And hold on, hold on. I I have not noticed the Lego piece in this in this room. Where is this Lego piece? Oh, there it is on the right side. Okay, there's two Lego pieces there. Now I see the two Lego bricks on the right side. The giant Tinker toy keeps drawing, drawing my vision. Okay. Uh. Uh, orb. Yeah, Erector said. I, I did not have one of those. I had friends who had those. And those just seemed like way too much work. Uh, get out. Okay. We'll set the speed back to normal. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's a unique death in this room. Okay, there we go. You really bit the bean buckwheat. Lack of regard for organics in action again. They never heard the warning shot concept around here. Anyways, you're dead. There you go. Hole in one. Yeah, I was also a, a definitely a Lego kid. I made many of a Lego spaceship things. Okay, get out. Like, there's there's a Twitter account that I follow that just shows the... Um. Uh, the old Lego sets from like the eighties and nineties, and oh man, that's that's just so much nostalgia from seeing those. Okay, look around. Debris enclosed hollow, poking out of the ceiling is a chute which he originally entered through. Crusty lamps linked by non-UL approved wire provide additional illumination. Okay. So there's the wire. And the wire's going over here. What a looking wire runs from lamp to lamp and disappears into the hole to the left. Appearing to the small opening, notice a tiny reactor providing power for the lights. Okay. Can we take the reactor? Unhook the reactor from the cheap wires, take it with you. Okay. You get wires? Won't help you now. Okay. The castle say, yeah, my, my cousins had, had the castle. Uh, I was always a little jealous of my cousins because it was all, it was three boys um, all about the same age. And they always had all of the toys. So it's like going over to their place once a year. So it's like, hey, all the all the cool latest toys you see on TV, they have literally all of them. Like, wow. <laughs> wow, deep. And then eventually, they're the, they're the ones who had, like, a Super Nintendo and an N64. So that was my only exposure to N64 at the time. Was once a year. Get to, get to play N64. Okay. So what we got here? 
Someone or something has done a real job on this tanker. This is a result of some space battle, or perhaps you're not the only one roaming around here. Um, okay, so I remember... Uh... If you... Except for the ones on the left, most of the wires look worn. So, I seem to recall this is a soft lock that you can get into here. If you... No, they did not have crossfire. Uh, I, I don't think anybody I knew had crossfire. Uh, if you take the wires here before uh, this happens, before the, the rat gives you the business, um, it, it's a soft lock, I think. Seem to have been mugged by some type of large rat. As you pick loose fur from your teeth, you notice a less bulky feeling. Okay, and all we have is a gem. So, our reactor is gone. The rat took the... Took the reactor. Okay, let's just keep going this way. See what's over here. This should be the... The, the Megazord. Power Rangers Megazord. And if I remember correctly, this room is dangerous. Because you need to... Gutted carcass of the tanker opens up to reveal even more junk. A metal head rests nearby. An ancient model of a battle bot. That you'd hate to run into whatever brought this big guy down. Looks like something poked it in the eye. Two eyes in the battle bot head. One of them's been broken. So you need to get into the, the eye of the battle bot here. But if you go too far down... This happens. Stepped off a metallic escarpment, tumbled in the darkness, twisted jagged remnants of old vehicles remain. Reach out to slow your dark descent, cutting short your life in the process. We dead again. Sierra. Okay. We want to climb into the eye. Okay. Oh, nice. Complete box Crossfire. Didn't didn't Crossfire get a um, like recent remake? I think. Or like a re-release? Because Millennials. Uh, look pod. Look ship. Bounce a metal ball on a thing to get in the hole. Isn't that, isn't that just cornhole? I think. Cute little thing. Never seen anything like these parts. Where these parts? For a good time, don't call Hal. All right. Looks like there's some wires above it. Won't help you now. You don't have one of those. There's clearly wires right here. Bounced a metal ball on a thing to get into a hole. Like cornholes played with. Uh, um, sand, little sandbags, I think. Beanbags. So that, that would be the only difference from, from your description. Uh, climb ship. Ship is too slick. You seem to remember an ectomorphic programmer friend telling you about ships with non-stick coatings for greater debris collision tolerance. Alright. Climb. That's an engine, maybe? We'll climb. Not a good location. Climb. Okay, climb up the front. Climb. Climb ship. Okay, they want you to do it from that very specific part. Okay. So obviously we need something to climb with that. Oh, it was an actual, like, licensed toy. Hmm. It wouldn't be something like Labyrinth, then. Because that was the... Like, tilt... Tilt the, the surface to, to do the thing. But that was with Metal Balls. Uh... 
That's right. The, the part in that tunnel there is one of the few screens in the game where you don't have to press another button in order to keep moving. All the other screens, you stop moving once you enter a new, a new area. Okay. So down here is where the top of the ladder was. Standard low-tech ascent descent unit. So we want to climb down. All right, so the reactor is back here because the rats took it from us or took it back. So we're going to get that reactor again. Unhook the reactor, take it with you. Okay. And there's no rats around the edge of the screen here, so they didn't notice me taking it. Okay, climb. All right, and then very important. We need a way to climb on top of that ship. So we're going to take the ladder. Grab the ladder, jam it in your pocket. Ouch. 1971, geez. Bullseye. Huh. Yeah, I've never heard of that. With a big metal ball, huh? I'm sure there's probably a version of that that used, like, lawn darts or something, but probably resulted in, like, multiple deaths. So, hey, let's just change it to a big, big metal ball. Uh, get wire. Okay. Take the only decent piece of wire available. So if you take that wire um, before you first go through this tunnel, you you can't beat the game. <laughs> it's just that wire's gone, and you need that wire. That's the only wire in the whole game, huh? So that's like that's like ski ball, except you're bouncing the ball instead of sliding it. Interesting. That'd probably be loud as hell too if that's a, a metal ball. Okay. Use ladder. Yeah, lawn darts. How? Why they ever marketed the uh, kids? They'll never know. Um. Outside shit. Shift. Sure. All right. Climb ladder. You notice it to be slick up here. Be careful. So if you do this, why don't you be careful next time? All right. So just even a fall like that, that's enough to kill you <laughs> because this is a, a Sierra game. Uh, all right, open hatch. Move to position, grabbing the dull finish of the hatch's handle, commence to open and enter the ship. Oh man, yeah, is there is there a competitive high level bullseye? Oh man. Wait, isn't that just an arcade ticket ticket machine? <sighs> okay, so we are inside the ship now. My game of choice in the arcade was Sidewinder. What a, what a great game Sidewinder was for for farming tickets. Uh, so what we got here? First to surprise how intact the ship's interior is, immediately to right panel with a red button. Midship on the right wall is a main diagnostic computer, directly across the two passenger seats ahead of you the cockpit. Okay, so we'll take a look at the computer. Access denied, power low, auxiliary reactor, oh god, okay. Ox reactor not online, insufficient power to commence system check, using stored power. Stored power below 10%. I don't know why that that screen goes away so quick, but okay. Um, so what's in the hole here? Look into the cavity. Notice only two cable ends. Someone is made off of the ship's power supply. Okay, so use reactor. Drop the reactor into the hole and attempting to reconnect the cables. You find that one is much too short. Okay. Luckily, we have some wires. 
Carefully connect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back into place once you finished. Okay. All right. What does computer say now? Power level nominal, auxiliary reactor online. Okay. Check. Nominal. Good. Landing gear. No, sure. Warp motivator. Nominal. Good. That's the thing we picked up with the, the claw. Birds in good shape. Okay. Um, press button. Ramp is immobilized, but the junk is lying in. Exit the hatch inside. Oh, that's just that's the exit ship button. Open hatch. Okay. Release this here. It's still using metal balls, so probably still loud as hell. Uh, sure. Hey, Nietzsche. Yeah, that's well. That's that's Sierra for you. <laughs> Uh, though generally PC games of the era um, didn't shy away from violence um, and depictions of violence as much as console games at the time did. Because um, PC games, like now now and then, for the most part, more geared told, toward an adult audience um, than trying to appeal to everybody with consoles back in the day. Um, so that, that's why you would get Stuff like this in in like eighties PC games, at least in the West. I don't know if that's any different in um, uh, like Japanese market or anything, but that that's the case with with Western games at the time. Uh, so what we got here? Pilot seat, sporty little ship, fronting the control panel, computer screen. All right, look at the screen. Okay, so. Engines. So if I hit three for takeoff, full thrust needed. Okay, so I can hit one for engines. Okay. All right, three for takeoff. Feel strong rumbling as the ship strains to loosen itself from the confines of the junk heap accumulated space. Finally, begins to rise. Hey Gundam. Yep. Trying to stream more. I'm almost done with classwork, so I got lots more time to stream. Ship rises successfully, collides at the top of the freighter. Resulting explosion sends a pul pulpery of flesh and metal fragments careening in all directions. Why would there be flesh in all directions? Okay, sure. I thought it was all robots here, but alright, sure. Oh, that was that was Roger's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Your radar is designed to avoid such an occurrence. All right, sure. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That is true. There, there's a whole lot more very adult content on Japanese computers. <laughs> uh. Okay. Screen. Okay. So. The the death message tells you tells you what to do to do this. You want to turn on your radar first. Now in operation. Then turn on your engines. Okay. Then we take off. Strong rumbling. Ship begins to rise. Ship rises several meters, stops abruptly, alarm from the computer attracts your attention. Ascent halted due to obstruction. Okay. So we can land. Weapon system. Okay, if I hit land, what does that do? Settles back down. Okay, so it doesn't put out the landing gear again. Alright, take off. Uh-huh. Okay. Weapons. Controls, enemy ship coming from behind, lock on, space bar to fire. Okay, fire, space bar. Let's get out of here. Shot blasts a new orifice into the side of the junk freighter. 
Unfortunately, your inadequately protected ship is struck and subsequently destroyed in the bottleneck of metallic objects striving to pass through the same relatively small opening. And yeah, you want some, some graphic death images. <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, space quest. Okay. So we want to set screen. Turn on the radar. Turn on the engines. Take off. Weapon system. Shields forward. Then fire. New orifice inside the junk freighter. The pressure generated by the desired ship's atmosphere to escape the considerably lower pressure of space causes your ship to be spit out like a watermelon seed. Okay. Now we in space. Space. Okay. All right. So, navigation system. Scan. So we got Planet Ortega. Uh, unknown habitants. Volcanic. Crater strewn surface. So that sounds like a bad place to be that we probably don't want to go there right now. So the planet Fleabutt. Sector 35, one known settlement. And if you remember from the uh, the manual in the game, uh, this year for vacation, I think we'll all go to Flea Butt. They're not going to Roberta Land. They're going to Flea Butt. So we remember that from the manual. So let's go to Flea Butt. Two to set course. Okay. All right. Light speed. Five. Woka wanted for vending machine fraud. Judgment. Terminate. So apparently in Space Quest 2, when we mailed in our mail order form for the Labian Terabis whistle using the time traveling mailbox, uh, that was a fraudulent transaction apparently. Though, I don't think it was ever explained in any of the Space Quest 2 lore how we got that order form. Uh, so I don't, I don't, I still don't to this day don't know what the deal about that is. <laughs> All right, planet flea butt. All right, we set down the aluminum mallard. That's our ship. All right. Lee butt. Press the button. As you step out of your ship onto the surface of Flea Butt, you're hit in the face by the harsh wind. Look like a storm is brewing. Meanwhile, another spacecraft touches down elsewhere on the very same planet. So there's two solutions for how to deal with the main puzzle on this planet. Um, there was a quicker solution for this that I used in the speed run. I'm going to do the slightly longer solution. All right. So invisible Terminator robot is after us. Okay. Off in the desert somewhere. Okay. So if we go to the right. What's to the right? Hmm. 
Aha. Aha. Several large rocks here. One large rock has a large overhang. Almost appears to be a cave. Under the overhang, you see large pulsating pods. This seems safe. What? Look, pods. That... <laughs> I don't know why the, the game keeps doing this. Alright, so these pods, absolutely not safe. Congratulations on your recent death for Pod Chower. You've been a real hoot. So this this did this in Space Quest 2 as well, where it would describe something in the look around text, and then when you want to investigate it further, it just says, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, so this wrapped around. So can we go south from here? We can't. Oh, God. Danger noodle. I don't know if that's really close to the camera or... Oh, God. No, it's that big. <laughs> okay. We've been a real hoot again. All right. Well... So going going south not really an option. Can I go north? Okay. All right, south not an option. Which means north. Startled by the sight of a giant beast just beyond the sand dune to the north. Alright. Look at that beast. Your fear turns to curiosity as you realize it's not a real beast but a mechanical creation. Although it still looks dangerous, you can't decide whether to blast off this rock or inspect further the wonders of Fleabutt. Oh yeah, we're, we're about to meet the best friend in Space Quest. The Peepo of Space Quest. Soon enough. Yo, come back now here. Alien scum. All right. Our boy. Ha! Tourist trap. Giant metal facsimile of a space beast is nothing more than a cheap marketing ploy designed to suck in any moron dumb enough to fall for such trickery. You suddenly feel like a dumb moron. Uh. Alright, so there's some sort of display case out here. What's in here? Peer through the glass, find a cute and cuddly little creature. Small sign of the glass informs you that this is an Antarian slime devil. How cute. Alright, break glass. Just open the case. Alright, open case. Maybe cute, an idiot will get near one. Looks like you won't be around to appreciate the other diverse wonders of this garden spa of the universe. Didn't even meet Fester. Alright. They they put a lot of work into this particular death screen. <laughs> that's that's just the Roger facing right sprite. But alright. Sure. Alright, let's do a little bit more recon here before checking in with our boy Fester. So we got a sign here. See flea butt from Mog's head entrance free? Sorry, temporary clothes for repair. Okay, that's two sentences at the top. But, like, what? What is that sentence? Those are two sentences. Mog's head. Oh, okay, Mog is the giant monster. 
Okay. Uh. Inside one of Mog's legs, elevator shaft, leading up the interior, use elevator. Okay. Perhaps so so is closed for a reason. Okay. So this is a screen that we never really saw in the speed run. Within the cavernous interior of Mog's belly, an elevator shaft leads downstairs, run beneath the first and second level platforms. Heavy equipment necessary to automate Mog can be seen from the upper level. Okay. Yeah, this is this is definitely a very safe room to be. Uh, large electric motor providing power for Mog's automation hums noisily away. So we got some hooks. Okay. Yep. So if you walk too close to those. We've been a real hoot. All right, sure. Okay, so that's all that's up there. We have an elevator up. Uh, what does the sign say? Danger snakes. Just ahead, visit the Mog Memorial. Galaxy famous World O Wonders. All right. I think it's time. It's time. Howdy, stranger. The name is Blatz, Fester Blatz. Welcome to World of Wonders. Go ahead, have a look at some of the trendiest items in the known universe. Make the most of your vacation, Buckazoid. What you got, Fester? Ask about sale. Items. Uh... Nice little Orat on a stick. Kids just love this. Hours of fun for the whole family. How cute the little guy is. That is pretty cute. Red Hot Item. Official Astro Chicken Flight Hat. Really turn some heads in the sporty little number. Modeled after the hot new arcade game Sweeping the Galaxy. Alright, so there's Orat on a stick. There's the hat. High temperature planets. Nice pair of thermal weave underwear. Keep your internal environment pleasant enough even on the sweatiest worlds. So the underwear. Yeah, take your time. Okay. So the thermal weave underwear. Probably going to come in handy on that volcanic planet. And then the other two things. Not really a use at the moment. Okay, so we want to buy the hat. Everything here costs 25 buckazoids, and you don't have that much. Okay, so that means we're going to need at least 75 buckazoids. All we have is this glowing gem. Uh, so we'll save. All right. Sell gem. I'm I certainly one fine hunk of Orium. I'll take it off your hands for 350 buckazoids. What do you say? Says the haggle interface. So we only need 75 buckazoids to buy buy the stuff in here. Um, but if you remember back in Space Quest 1, if you immediately took the first offer uh, for selling the Sand Skimmer, um, you softlocked yourself because you didn't get the jetpack and you didn't know you needed the jetpack until way later in the game. And I think it's a similar situation to this. So we're going to say no. 400 Bacazoids, what do you say? No. 425 buckazoids. What do you say? 
No. Maybe it can't go any higher. Maybe some other time, eh? 425. Alright. So sell gem. 100 bucket zoids. What do you say? No. Hard bargain. Maybe some other time. Sell gem. 100 bucket zoids. I'll fuck you, Fester. Okay, so. If you if you didn't make a save before you talk to your boy Fester Blatz, you can't get the the over four hundred, and I think you need four hundred plus in order to complete the game. I think so. You want to say no, no, and then yes. But I think you really only need four hundred. I can't remember. It's, it's been a long time. All right, so we're gonna buy the. Uh, the Orat. We're going to buy the hat because it's critically important. This hat. Uh, and then we're going to buy the underwear. Uh, okay. So we have an Orat on a stick, our thermal weave underwear, and our flight hat. As long as, and also, three hundred and fifty buckazoids left. I think. 350. 350 bucks swords. Okay. One of the many interesting postcards. Nice. I had no idea this was in the game. <laughs> Alright. Arrakis. A great spot for winter travel. Arrakis holds many delights for the adventurous vacationer. Nothing can compare with the blinding dust storm or being crushed by a sandworm. All right, what else we got? One of the many interesting postcards. This is just a a Windows Solitaire card back. Black Hole Bertha. Giant interstellar vacuum. Black Hole Bertha comes sweeping through the galaxy. All travelers advise to stay away from Bertha. Just buy the postcard and tell everyone you went there. Sure. Ortega. That's one of the planets we can go to. Uh, volcanoes of Ortega constantly reshaping its surface, dressed in heat-resistant underwear. The hardy traveler can find a lava lover's paradise on the starkly enjoyable planets. Roberta Land. All right. Our girl, Roberta. Roberta Land, come join the fun at the fun park of the future. See characters from your favorite stories come to life again and again. Recently revised. So don't miss a single thrilling scene. Beta Alpha Starless Region. Real solitude. Come to a place so far from everything you came to see the stars. Mind-numbing boredom greets you as you drift aimlessly through nothing. A must for the brain dead. Wish she were here instead of me, Acheron. Sure. Friendly creatures of Acheron are a delight for the young and old alike. Tame enough to come right up and caress you, yet wild enough to slash you to shreds if provoked. Sure. All right, then back to Arrakis. Okay. Uh, natural wonders worth the junk. Okay. What are those action figures? All right, talk to Fester. Not listening to you likes his own. Nice. Fester won't talk to us. Uh. Okay, but this this is probably all we can uh, really do here. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Looks like that lightning's getting close. Better be careful out there. Okay. Oh. So, this is Roger Wilco, the man I've been sent across the universe to track down and terminate. I'm not impressed. You're too easy to find. You tend to leave a mess wherever you go. Yeah. Seems you forgot to pay for that Labion and Terror Beast mating call whistle. Now let's see. With interest, it comes to 400,000 buckazoids. I don't think you got that kind of cash on you. No, I don't think so. Good people of the Gypsoid Novelty Co. are most displeased. Non-payment is a serious offense. But lucky for you, I'm in a good mood today. I'll count to ten real slow. Then I track you down. If you make it to your ship, I forget I see you. But if I catch you again, I dust you like bunt cake. 
all right perhaps we can we can make it to our ship maybe all right so because um because we we bought the um that whistle in king space quest 2 on like a payment plan or something um and we're supposed to pay for it like a, a a month or so after we got it um and then we got put into uh hibernation on the escape pod for like a hundred years or something so all of the interest accrued on our uh our whistle that we didn't pay for and now they sent collections after us <laughs> okay maybe we can get to our ship in time before robot gets us i'm sure we'll be fine i'm sure we'll be fine oh god all right that that did not work okay so alternatively all right using the elevator Uh All right, so there's there's robot. I see you Wilco. You can't. Uh... Uh... Hmm. So there's... There's some way that you can... Is that what that thing's called? Two rope pull. Okay, yeah, rope pulleys. Uh, mounted on tracks. Okay. So you probably have to wait until it gets up here, and then use pulley. There we go. Okay. All right, got him. Okay. Oh, uh, junk first level invisibility belt survive relatively intact. Okay, good belt. Please. Okay. Oh. Our boy Fester. Hey, what's going on here? Didn't you read the science and we're closed? 
Gotten real, the grease will in Android. Or like that Terminator series. Good riddance to bad circuits. Might as well write down with me. Alright, our boy, Fester. Helping us out. The start of a beautiful bromance. Dang it. We can't put on our hat. Okay, so that is one way to solve that. The other way to solve that is you go down this way. And this is the way the speed run does it, because it puts you closer to your ship. Oh no, look out a scorpion. This is suddenly King's Quest. And you want to get the robot to spawn. And the way I could tell when I was speedrunning this when it spawned was because the game would slow down very slightly when the robot spawned, but on original hardware, it's always going to be slow, so... But the robot doesn't spawn if you're standing still. Terminator. Please spawn. There we go. Okay. So you do that, and then do this. Okay. And then use ORAT on belt. So you use the ORAT on a stick to get the belt, like that, and then it appears to be the same amount of points as you get for taking out Robot the other way. Okay, and that's what we needed from here. Uh, so we'll sit, screen... And then take off. Screen. Navigation. Okay. Zoom scan. Monolith Burger. Fast food dive. Sector 62. A finite number served. Alright. Let's go there. Now that we're flush with buckazoids. Okay. Okay. Light speed. All right, approaching Monolith Burger. Docking maneuver completed, the engine shut down. Welcome to Monolith Burger. Up the hatch, ramble on in. All right. Burger. Eh? Look around. The decor, like the food, is the same in Monolith Burgers all over the universe. 
Generic counter clerks are eagerly waiting to help you. Diverse life forms are crowded around the counter and sitting in booths consuming what can only loosely be termed food. All right. Look menu. All right. Mini monolith, monolith with poly cheese, filet au orat, jumbo monolith with poly cheese, the big belcher combo, including jumbo mono with poly cheese, space buds with extra grease, and a sloppy slurper. All right. Monolith fun meal, space buds, tang, small, medium, large, or a sloppy slurper. Oh boy. Okay. So if I hit seven, that doesn't do anything. All right. Walk into Monolith Burger. I'm gonna take your order. Uh, so we want the fun meal, probably. Seven. Order. Uh, seven. Monolith fun meal. And a sloppy slurper. Uh, C. Okay. All right. Space buzz with that. Yes or yes. Yeah. Would you like a black fruit fry with that? Yes. 11 bucks. So it's okay. Pay. Have a nice day. Usually pick up the greasy bag. Hardly wait to have a seat and dig in. All right. Eat. Hey, what's in this? My burger must be my fun meal prize. It's a swell decoder ring. All right, so we got the decoder ring. Mighty tasty, mildly tasty, not tasty at all. In fact, we're reminding you of the slick skin of a Valerian, Vol Vorlian mucus worm. All right, sure. It's dead. All right, what we got here? Look, machine. Scum soft, Astro Chicken. Astro Chicken must land on the Astro Chicken landing pad. He's depending on you to bring him to safety. <sighs> left arrow, move left. Down arrow, stop. Left and right. Right arrow, move right. Up arrow, toggle, flapping. Feed doesn't keep all your feed. Hit the landing pad too fast or bounce back up. Landing outside the landing pad is fatal. Fly too high, you'll bounce off the atmosphere and plummet back to the surface. Okay. All right, let's play. Inserts, Buckazoid. Look, game. All right, insert coin. Fuck. Okay, Bacock. Bacock. Cock. So this is essentially um, Moonlander. This is a Moonlander clone. But that's what Scumsoft does. They clone in, in pirate games. Hey, okay, a cock. Shit. A cock. Nope. Okay, a cock. A cock. All right. And then we see this. Huh. Use decoder ring. 
The secret code goes something like this. <sighs> okay. All right. Uh, H E L P U S help us. Uh, this is some real adventure game hours now. W uh e we a r e r we are uh b e i n g being we are being H E L D held uh C A P captive captive um let's see B B Y by uh, S C U M S that's Scumsoft. The the makers of this fine Astro Chicken game. Uh O N on T H E on the S uh, where's that one M small moon on P E S T U Pestulon, just like the name of the game, Pestulon A uh, N and I N P I N P E N E T R impenetrable uh F O R C E force. It's probably force field. Yeah, force field. Uh Surrounds the moon. Surrounds the moon. It's uh, what is this one? M U S. It must. F I. First, B, 
D E deactivated. Period. It's uh O R I origin is uh O Okay. No, shit. <laughs> Reading the wrong line there. Its origin is uh you uh n that's probably unknown if i had to guess k and yeah unknown unknown to us okay so that doesn't really help. Uh, S C U M Scum Soft uh, S E C security is A R M E armed. Some scum soft security is armed with uh w i t armed with uh j jello Jello is armed with Jello uh, P pistols. Armed Scumsoft security is armed with Jello pistols. Okay. Uh, we're. Uh, counting on you uh, W H who ever you are And then the last line is T two guys in uh, T two guys in trouble. Okay, so the full message here is help us. We're being held captive by Scumsoft on the small moon on Pestulon. An impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. Its origin is unknown to us. Scumsoft security is armed with jello pistols. We're coming. We're counting on you. We're not, uh, coming on you. We're counting on you, whoever you are. Two guys in trouble. Okay. That would be a PC 98 game otherwise. 
Okay. We did it. <laughs> uh... Got secret message. Okay. So can we go to this ship? Out of my earlock, geek. Crouch. Kerpow. Okay. Well, he left, so can we go back? Go back in there now? Oh, no. That's it for you, bozo. Didn't hit anything important. Nice. Direct Roger. So I think if you... If you eat too much here, I think you die as well. Um... Let's see, six. 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 Okay, drink with that, space buds, black fruit pie, special drink with every purchase, pay. Alright, I think this is one of the deaths. Eat. Eat the whole thing, Roger. Mighty tasty. I don't have any food. Okay, maybe not. Never mind. I could have sworn that was a death, but I guess not. Okay. So that, pretty sure that's all we can do here on... Oh man, look at this filthy table over here. Now that's some fast food dining. That's pretty much what my local KFC looks like at the dining area. Uh, enter ship. Slide back into the ship, closing the hatch behind you. Dock and control beam begins guiding you safely clear the monolith burger. So we've pretty much looped around here on our navigation menu all the way back to Ortega, which we haven't been to yet, so let's go there. And it is a volcanic planet. All right, light speed. engines back orbiting Ortega. Let's land. Yep. Stand. Ortega. Okay, so let's exit the ship. My, my, hot planet. Hopefully it'll last more than a few minutes. We'll be fine. I'm going to take a truly lava lover's paradise. Volcanic activity constantly reshapes its surface. Have any maps older than last week? Throw them out. 
All right. Too late, you realize that walking around unprotected on this planet is hazardous to your health. You feel your blood begin to boil. You sizzle into oblivion. This planet couldn't be so bad if you could keep your cool somehow. All right. Well. So good thing that postcard back at Fester's place tipped us off that we need to wear the thermo weave underwear. Figuring out which side is the front, you put on the thermo weave underwear. They power up automatically, keeping you comfy at all temperatures. All right. You're beating the heat with the thermo weave underwear. All right. So now we good. Parts of the planet's surface are not entirely stable. Better be careful, you end up in the lava fondue below. Okay. Alright. This area seems safe. Uh What's the worst that can happen? Oh. It appears that is the... There you go, Ace. You blundered your way within range of the pirate's jello gun. You suffocate in an impenetrable block of jello. That's... That's a pretty great... face there. My watch seems to have crashed. Great. Cool. Uh Player Tega, truly level of his paradise. That's the same as before. Look. Little company men, scum soft employees happily performing their duties, looking at their weapons. Probably wouldn't wouldn't want to get too close. Okay, so this is the scum soft security that uh the secret message warned us about. Yeah, it's a pretty good phase. Uh, and the solution for this is just wait. Wait a little bit, and then they'll just leave on their own. Here, the war of the pirate ship taking off. Ship streaks across the sky to unknown destination. Okay. All right, so we got a look telescope. Look through telescope. Aha! Discover the force beam generator. That moon must be Pestulon. Okay, so we found Pestulon. Sure. You don't actually get any points for doing that, by the way, which is a little little weird. Uh we got a box here. Look in crates. Here it just looks like an old crate. Full of thermal detonators. Okay, get. Pick up one of the detonators. Careful, blow your fingers off with that thing. Donator. Used for blowing stuff to little bits. It has an impact switch, so in other words, don't drop it. Okay. Handy metal pole with a thousand and one uses. So we're gonna get it. Get the pole. All yours. Okay. Climb becomes steeper. Rim of the old volcano. Okay. 
Reach the rim of the decayed cinder cone, overwhelmed by the sight. An impression machine of staggering size sits in the middle of the volcanic crater. Pointing to a small moon high in the Ortegan sky, pulsating circular energy fields are being emitted into space towards the moon. So, uh, the message that we got before, the secret message said, an impenetrable force field surrounds the moon. It must first be deactivated. So, we gotta deactivate that thing somehow. Sent the massive base of a force beam generator. Unit can generate a force field powerful enough to encircle a small moon. Okay. We got a ladder. Base fit, ladder leads up top. Okay. Climb. Okay. Ground. Trying to catch your breath, you take in the panoramic view. Below, you can see a ship off in the distance, volcanoes stretching out over the horizon. Large circular opening here at the top of the generator. Must be where the beam originates. Watch your step up here. Okay. Sure. I don't know if that actually saved or not. Okay. Look in hole. Cautiously peer down. Too dark to make out anything. Drone of the generator tells you something's definitely happening. So. We just happen to get a thermal detonator. So. Drop destinator in hole. Explosion disables a force field generator. You may now travel safely with Pestilon. Okay. If you go a few pixels too far down, you will fall down that slope and die because space quest. Okay. So now back to the ship, because we can go to Pestilon. Uh-oh. Detonators apparently set off a chain reaction of earthquakes. You better get off this rock ASAP. Okay, let's do that. My mind thinks it's certainly changed since we were here last. That unstable rock has fallen into the simmering lava below. So. Alright. Jump. <laughs> okay. New improved quick tanning. All right, so obviously we can't we can't jump that. Uh, we do have this sweet metal pole though. Use pole. Ralpher is in grim determination for the tremendous leap. Randy and Judge gives you a nine point five, truly outstanding jump by one of the finest young athletes we've seen this season. We'd like to try that again, but your pole seems to have fallen into the tumultuous lava below. But more importantly, we're across. That's all that matters.
Okay. All right. Sits. Screen. Let's get off the planet before it blows up. Okay. All right. Scan. So we're looking for the moon. The moon of Ortega. So it's going to be nearby on the map here. Okay. Pestulon. Surface uncharted. Set course. Light speed. Yep. Sector 69. Nice. All right. Uh, land. Mighty Wump, you set the aluminum and mallard down on the surface of Pestulon. Stand. Okay. All right. Exit the ship. Okay. Pestulon, very green. Make your way through the forest to strange trees. To this clearing, we discover the entrance to some large underground complex. Must be scum soft. Suddenly, the door of the complex begins to open. The guards file out, disperse into the woods. Alerted by your presence, when you landed, two guards remain behind watching entrance. Okay. Enter building. All right. Congratulations. Here's a good face. All right. So what we're going to do is we have the invisibility belt. Put on belt. Exit. All right. Same deal. It exits some scum soft. Two guards remain. Push button on belts. Use belts. Thing really works. Quickly realize only a few moments before the belt power pack is depleted. Enter building. Yeah. Let me just walk on in. Okay. It's happening. Looks like you made it just in time. Invisibility belt completely out of power. Okay. Then the outer fortifications, elevator door, and a button on the wall. Press button. All right. Time for my favorite part. Running into this wall repeatedly. Uh, scum soft. Okay. We got a door here. Scaredy intruder in accounting. Uh, okay, we can't move. So you don't want to not go in that door just yet. Close that door. We got door to the left here. That is extremely difficult to get into. 
got to get just the right frame. There we go. Okay. Find yourself in a janitor's closet. Six cents for this kind of thing. Look in closets. Rummaging around old grimy janitorial coveralls. Okay. Coveralls. Great idea, Roger. No be suspicious of a janitor walking around. Grab the coveralls, pull them on. Dump all the old items you've been pocketing along the way. What a great disguise. What's this? Reach down and we get a Mr. Garbage trash vaporizer. Seen these babies in all the janitor's supply catalogs. Appears always too cheap to get you one. Okay. So that's all we got is vaporizer. A uh, Mr. Garbage. Vaporize all non-organic biodegradable manner. I.e. trash. Okay. So we got that. And any more doors here. So we got a door here. This door is a key card security system as well as a composite facial scanner. Tricky gaining access. Okay. Turns the door, something worthwhile on the other side. So we need a key card and some sort of face ID thing. Door is locked, okay. So this door might be how we got in. Yeah. Okay. Press button. Okay. So going north along this hallway, it's the first door on the right. Okay. Hey, pays us no mind, because we're with janitorial. Okay. And we can just... Security, intruder in accounting, disguised as a janitor. You're in deep trouble now. These guys know that a real janitor would never bypass a full wastebasket. get a unique sprite for cotton jello in the the janitor costume blown to cover surprisingly lack of janitorial skill brush up on your technique with space quest one and two you don't really do any space janitor stuff in one or two aside from the very very beginning of two but all right sure all right are you Zap trash. Got it. Okay, let's see what's to the left here. Look around. Cost efficient corporate accounting department of Scumsoft Inc. Hardworking accountants trying to figure out where the company spends its money. Okay. Zap. Look. Graph. Sure. Look. Painting. The boss. Elmo Pug. Okay. Get painting. Got the picture. So. We need that to. Security. Intruder. All right, so we can't walk away with the painting because they'll figure that out. And the picture of the head of the company will surely get us through that security door. So we're going to need a way to bring that painting with us without taking the painting. So there's a copier here. Use painting on copier. 
Copy painting. Chris, making sure no one's watching. Slip Elmo's picture into the copier. Press the start button. Out pops. Beautifully reproduced copy. You roll up stash in your pocket. Don't forget the original. Okay. And then we want to replace... Uh, painting. Replace the original picture. Okay. GG. Okay. And then... Uh... Let's go to the right. Okay. All right, what do we have here? Dead end. So all of these are dead ends. I think this is a dead end too. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hey, Croc. Good to see you. Yep, the thrilling conclusion to your Space Quest 3. I think I'll... I, I'm close enough to the end that I'll just beat the game tonight. Okay. I do have class in... seven hours, though. <laughs> uh, Look around. Boss's cubicle error and the boss is in. Be reverent. Uh... Okay. Look at the boss. Behind the desk sits a boy who looks to be about 14 years old. Do your job and get out. All right. We got over here. Okay. There's my ship. Stand on a platform overlooking the scum soft vehicle bay. Center of the hangar sits your ship, surrounded by rows of short range skull fighters. How will you ever get out of here? Okay. Nope, the boss is not in, and there's something on his desk now. Desk drawers are locked, however, some has carelessly left a key card on the desk. Okay. All right. So we have a key card and we have a copy of Elmo's picture, which should be all we need to uh, get through that door because the door had a key card slot and it also had a facial identification scanner on it. So we should have everything we need to make it through all of that.
But first, some bonks for good measure. Okay. Use key card. I'm in, you think to yourself, hacker voice. Your synthesized voice say key card verified. Stand by for composite facial scan. All right. I'm sure this will be fine. It'll recognize us. Composite facial scan complete. Access denied. Okay, so it doesn't kill you or anything. I'm in. Hacker voice. Hold up. Uh, photo. Okay. All right, look around. Cautiously enter a darkened chamber. Seemingly bottomless shaft drops off into a black abyss. A platform in the center of the chamber are the two guys from Andromeda. Wiggle helplessly in lime jello. Platform can only be reached by the four retractable bridges at each entrance. Uh, look, bridge. Only visible means of access to the detention platform is by means of retractable bridges. Uh, extend bridge. Look, wall. Walls reveal no exits. Uh, look control. We have control buttons. It joins each door. Okay, so you can see them on the left and right side of the screen. Um, oh shit. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, key card. Old photo. Press button. Okay. That's how you do that. Okay. Uh, open jello. Oh man, look at that fester. Nice. We stand, it couldn't be done. Free guys. Good idea, but how? Open Jello. Push Jello. All right. So it is Zap. Zap Jello. Successfully free the two guys from their slammy confines, and they begin to speak. So notice in the upper left of the, the game screen, it says our score is now 737 out of 738. Thanks, dude. Great to be out of that green stuff. Hey, what's your name? Roger Wilco. They discovered our distress message we coded into the Astro Chicken game and sent us here as punishment. Let's get out of here before we're discovered. Uh oh. Well, the bridge is out. What's your plan of getting us out of here, Wilco? Uh, we do not have a plan. Nobody's going anywhere. <laughs> you must have thought you're pretty clever, Mr. Wilco, disguising yourself as a janitor. Unfortunately for you, my boys, found your sorry excuse for a ship in the woods. Escort this gentleman to the arena. You boys haven't seen a good fight in quite a while. And do away with those two Andromedans. They have been more trouble than they're worth. Take them away. Also to the arena. You and the two guys are separated and escorted away. Door opens. You're led into the dark unknown. All right. So our score is not 737 anymore. All right. Time for the greatest mini game in the history of video games. 
Okay, Wilco, name of the game is Nukem Dukem Robots. The only rules that there are no rules. Arrow key to control your robot, J key to punch, M key to block. Let's go. Kick his robot butt. Let's let's let him win. So if you if you move up or down during this, it makes this so much harder. Okay. And it looks like you can only only punch at the right the right hand. So it looks like you can you can get him to use up a bunch of energy. Just by getting him to, to punch like this. Alright. End me. End me, robot. Actually, this looks like a pretty good cheese spot right here. <laughs> if you just do this... You, you, oh my god, I accidentally won. Alright, hold on. <laughs> so it looks like that might be the speedrun strat, actually. Now that Now that I see that. Because it looks like if you can get him into that position, the the boss just kills itself. And if you if you turn up the, uh... I know, right? I I was literally I was trying to lose on purpose, and then okay. And if you spam punches, it oh god, okay, spam punch this way. There we go. Okay, looks like you depleted your power. Last thing you see is your blood slowly spreading across the arena floor. Down for the count. All right. All right, let's actually win this time. Get them, you fools! He doesn't die when his robot crashes, but... But we do. Well, Roger, you done good. Managed to rescue the two guys and escape from Pestrel on Alive. Looks like this will be a milk run from here on out. Gosh, Raj, we really appreciate you saving us and all. Uh. Yep. Oh, whatever that text box is, we will never see it. I think we better get out of here. Pug's really sore. Probably sent some ships after us. I agree. All right. Light speed non-functional. Warning short range fighters approaching from the rear. Weapons lock on detected. All right. Joker's back on Pestilon. Must have tampered with the light speed thingamajig. All right. Attack speed. Weapon systems. They're approaching from the rear. So shields to the rear. Actually, we'll we'll see what it looks like when you get when you die. Having the correct shield up would have prevented this. The final shot shreds the inside of your ship. In the sudden vacuum, your bodily fluids expand beyond the capacity of your tissues. Your desiccated body will drift forever. A grim testament to your blundering stupidity. 
And then we get this incredible art again. All right. Shields to the rear. Target to the rear. Okay. Target to the front, shields to the front. Okay, no target. Target to the rear. All right. Got him. Boom. Target in front. Okay. Get up! Get up! Fuck! Oh, shit. Okay. You can only afford to have, like, two get away. Uh-oh. This part is actually way harder than it looks, too. Because the, the reticle can only move so fast. Alright, well, that, that time it just maneuvered right into the center by targeting... But the moving the targeting reticule works the same way as um, controlling Roger. Okay, front. And it moves at a set speed. Alright, shields in rear. You can also control it with the mouse, but that's kind of cheating as far as I'm concerned. Shield depleted. This is it. Boom. Remaining enemy ships have given up and are heading back to the planet. Looks like you were just too much for them. Okay. And then O for off. F6 for cockpit. Man, oh man. You really showed those bozos a thing or two. Now can we get something to eat? Inform the two guys that light speed is no longer functional. They're not overly pleased by this piece of news. What? Now I'll never get any food. Some rescuer you are. Hey, what's this thing on the wall? It says light speed maintenance access panel. Gee, maybe I can fix this bucket of plastic bolts. Yeah, this is it. Fan belt thing came off the round thing it was on. Just a second. Okay, she's all fixed. Let's go grab a burger. Too late. You realize that you have no course laid in. Light engines kick in before you can override. You inform the two guys that light speed is now functional, but it's out of control. They're not overly pleased with this bit of news either. Careening blindly through space, your ship speeds toward a sizable black hole. Once within the gravitation of the black hole, there's no escape. You plunge into destiny. So we're in a parallel universe now. Seemingly habitable planet. Okay. That planet looks pretty familiar. Huh, weird. The Sierra offices.
Greetings, Earthling. Two guys from Andromeda, you moved to the famous software authors. I'm Roger Wilco. All around nice guy. Hello, I'm Ken Williams, president and founder of Sierra Online. Our boy Ken, making a cameo in Space Quest 3. So space saga comes to a close roger feeling a little left out struts off to his ship with the satisfaction of knowing his mission has been accomplished the two guys from andromeda go on to create the space quest series of adventure games reaping for fame and fortune they grow fat on their success and soon become burnt out and begin a drunken tailspin into obscurity oof Of course, uh, no. The end. 728 out of 738. The 10 points I missed was searching the seat for some buckazoids, I think. Hey, yeah, Slot. I love that there's just fake credits for this game. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Okay, I guess there actually are real credits. Selling out your hard earned bucks to buy this game. Sure. Space Quest 1 through 6 is like a dollar on Steam. Alright, and then it loops. But of course, if we want to know how long this actually took, our, our timer here says 2 hours 6 minutes. How long did this actually take? I get it. You don't want your boss to know you've been playing Space Quest 3 for 1 hour 7 minutes 59 seconds. Uh. Sure. I apparently spent more than double the time in this uh, reloading saves, I guess. Because it doesn't count your total game time. It's just the, the non-deaths all the way through, I guess. Either that or the in-game clock on my Windows 98 machine is really off. <laughs> Alright. And then a vapor calc. Just to bring us home here. All right, leaving so soon, be anxiously awaiting your next visit. Be seeing ya. All right. Space Quest 3. Hell of a video game. All right, hopefully my, my thing here actually works because my watch app completely crashed again, and I don't know why it does that. Okay, yeah, it still works. Okay, so let's wrap up Space Quest 3 here. All right, Space Quest 3 completed. Yes. Uh, all right, things I liked. Much better looking game compared to the first two. Uh, actually has music and sound effects. And the music, the music is quite good. I really like the, the soundtrack to this game. 
um, especially on a Roland MT32, which kind of is the only way that you you get proper music in this game. Um, I think on anything else, you either just get the old beeps and boops of the PC speaker, and I don't think there's... Uh, I guess you could you could do the MT32 emulation on Sound Blaster, but it sounds like shit. It sounds so bad. Um, let's see other things I liked. Uh, a few puzzles had multiple solutions. Um, much more variety in locations and deaths. Uh. Pretty much every puzzle had a solution that made sense. There was there is very little adventure game logic in this. Um, let's see. Mini games were actually fun. So if you compare the mini games in three, which would be Astro Chicken and the robot fighting, and I guess technically the combat, the space combat. Um, compare that to the Sand Skimmer in one, and I guess the Slot Machine in one. Uh, three's vastly superior. Uh, I think that covers everything I liked about it. Um, things I didn't like. Uh... Having to decode that coded message yourself. Um, it it would have been nice if there was, like... If you could type in, like, decode this message for me or something, rather than having to do it yourself. Like, at least give the player the option to opt out of having to manually decode that message. Though... Though, really, you can actually complete the game without seeing that message at all. It, it's not like a required plot trigger for anything to actually happen. It's just something that you could do to get score and something to give you a clue along the way to um, solving, solving the game. But you could do a whole playthrough and never come across that. So, I don't know. It would have been nice if, if they did give the player the option to, to not spend 10 minutes staring at these symbols um what else here yeah I'm trying to think of anything else that I didn't didn't really like about this and not coming up with anything about it shockingly enough big memes fester blats Roberta land Ken Williams. Okay, perfect. DB, no. Alien Miles, absolutely, because it's Space Quest. All right, difficulty is hard. This one is hard for me to gauge because I know this game like the back of my hand, besides that one area um, with the electric motor in, in Fester's World of Wonders, because that wasn't part of the speed run. You never had to do that. Um, but everything but that, I, I have literally memorized because I, I memorized the speedrun route years ago. Um, but even though this game is a lot more non-linear than the first two Space Quest games, it still felt like it was usually pretty clear what you had to do um, in each area. Like, if I was going going towards this uh, blind, like, the beginning of the game, sure, you could, you could wander around that the garbage, the, the junkyard area as much as you wanted. Um, and I could see a player getting pretty easily stuck in that beginning part of the game. But once you, you kind of figure out that you can take the ladder um, with you, um, and then use that to get into the ship and gain access to the ship, then it becomes a very clear what you have to do. It, it pretty much spells out to you, here's what you need to, to fix the ship, and then just go do it. And then once you get access to space and are able to go between planet to planet to planet, 
it it should become pretty clear to the player what order you have to do things in um which is doing the volcano area last because you need to have some way to survive on the planet and then you need enough money to get the the thing to survive on the planet and then you have to find the thing that lets you survive on the planet um so that's pretty straightforward and then the the last part of the game is just um navigating that maze which isn't exactly hard to do it's very different from the other mazes in um in two two and one uh and the the giant robot part and the 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 ship part also not that hard but at least you could save scum that if you really needed to so that that kind of removes a lot of the difficulty with those but i could see that also being a sticking point so I think all in all, really, I would I would say this is about here on difficulty. I'd say this one's just about right compared to the other Seer Adventure games of the period. Um, it the game certainly doesn't hold your hand, but it doesn't put up like huge roadblocks for the player for a lot of it. So I'd put it I'd put it right there in the middle. And then rating one to five. Space Quest 3 is oh man it is it is very close between 3 and 4 being my favorite Space Quest games and probably in my top top 5 of Sierra Adventure games um so there's there's no way that I'm giving this anything lower than a five out of five. Um, it's a pretty large jump in quality of graphics, sound, puzzle design, writing, scope, um, controls, mini games, uh, characters. There's finally characters to talk to, like Fester. Um, the cutscenes. That that's kind of another big thing is that uh, there's actual proper cutscenes in this. I know in 2, there was a few of them. Like, 1, there was also a few of, like, the ship flying through the asteroid field and coming across the um, the Arcada. Uh, 2 had the scenes with Vohal and on the skimmer and all that. But it, it seems like the, the quality of cutscene is much, much higher in 3. Um, and kind of lives up to that promise on the back of the box of this being an interactive cartoon. Um, there's a much stronger case for this than they would have had in 1 and 2. And that's that's mostly because of the much, much greater graphics in this one compared to 1 and 2. But I would say that pulls it off. And and on, honestly, also thinking back to the, the games that use a similar engine to this, like uh, King's Quest 4 and even Quest for Glory 1 and 2, I would say Space Quest 3 probably suits that engine's um, strong points uh, the best out of those four. Um, though that said, Quest for Glory 2, one of the greatest games ever made, so no, not really knocking on that one, but um, I think just everything really came together really well for, for Space Quest 3. And then things changed pretty drastically again for 4, but we'll get to 4 when we get to 4. So... Space Quest 3, The Pirates of Pestalon, done in one sitting. A bit over two hours, 23 deaths, 38 saves. 5 out of 5. Great game.